What's up guys? So today I'll be reviewing the 9 inch Android touchscreen factory radio replacement. It does come with these controls down here that also replaces your AC controls. The controls do work pretty well. You can click here to bring it up or you can just touch the buttons. Right now I have it off so you can hear me but they do work. The only thing though is sometimes the fan speed it will skip skip numbers like it just did I think it skipped like two or three or something like that you can adjust in or out you can adjust the modes so right now I have it on heat and vents down here because it's kind of cold outside I'm gonna turn it off though everything works the way it's supposed to I changed it from Okay, the only thing that doesn't work for me right now is a touch screen. Touch screen doesn't work, but the controls do work. So, at least I thought they worked. I don't know why I'm having such. Okay, I have to have it on for it to for it to to turn it down. But I have it in Fahrenheit. When you get it out of the box, it'll be in Celsius. So I'm gonna go back. I'll show you later how to change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius. One thing that I did is I changed the background. The background, when you first get it, will be... For me, it was... I forget what it was exactly, but it wasn't anything really that cool. So I'm going to show you how to go into the files and change your background and change put put music on it and stuff. So right now I'm gonna connect my USB. One thing that I did was I ran these cables that came with it, there's two of them. I ran them through where the light was. I removed the housing for the light so that I could just run the cables through. It's made accessing them a lot easier. Installing this was actually pretty easy as well. So taking out the old radio is the hardest part. You have to pop out this panel, pop out this panel, pop out uh, this hazard light and then you have to slide out this CD bin then the hardest part about taking it out is there's two little screws in the back on the inside I where my hand is they're like all the way back here and up so getting a socket wrench on them I think I have the screws that I can show you what the screws look like the screws look like this so it won't focus screws look like this it's not a very high screw oh the camera's over here that's why but it's not a very high screw so your tools like to slip right off of it you don't have much room to work with down there so you can only turn it about two clicks and then turn it back and then turn it two clicks and then turn it back so it's it takes a while like before I really just prayed that I could get it off and before I really just stuck with doing the two clicks method and just keep on resetting it. It took me probably like an hour and 20 minutes trying to figure out what tool to use and how to get it off. But then after I kind of just sat there and did the tedious work of getting them off, it took about seven minutes per per screw. So. Just stick with it, that's the hardest part. When I reinstalled it, obviously I didn't put the screws back in. I just put these three in and it works just fine because that's not going anywhere. So I'm gonna plug in my USB. Okay, so my USB is plugged in. And as you can see, since I plugged in the USB, now it says internal right here and USB 4 down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the folders that I put on it, which are these three. These two are CD files. And then this one right here is my going to be my background. So I'm gonna select them, then hit copy. And then I'm going to go up to internal and 
hit paste. So once I hit paste, it should just put everything where it needs to go. You're gonna see there's the, where there's one of the files. Now, if I go into audio, these are the songs that some of the songs that I just put in are are in there, but it's not very organized on this screen right here. Actually, not sure if it put it in there or not. Yeah, put it in there. It's not very organized on that screen. And then if I go into here, uh, you can see my my photo. So when you're putting photos in the background, you need to make sure that it's sized in 16 by 9. If it's not sized in 16 by 9, this is 16 by 9. If it's not sized in 16 by 9, it will be looking like that right there. That's a, I think that's a 3 or I forget what size that is, but you see those two bars, you're going to have that. If you have, that one actually works. I don't know why that one worked. I think that's a 16 by 9. Uh, that one's a 16 by 9. I'm trying to find one that's not 16 by 9. This one's really weird it kind of turned it but that's what it would look like if it's not resized which you don't want that so resize it to 16 by 9 to set it as your background you hit this button right here and it is set successfully so when I go back to home that's going to be my background so that's uh that's one thing that I kind of like about this uh, to set your your climate control to Celsius you want to go into settings you want to hit factory you want to type in 3368 go to original car agreement you're going to go down to this right here which is temperature it's kind of loading a little bit temperature unit switch so right now it's in Celsius I'm going to keep it on Fahrenheit because I like it on Fahrenheit. But once you set it to Fahrenheit, you need to do two things. You need to reset it. So you need to get a small needle or something to go into that hole and press a button. So I use this needle right here. I keep some thread on it so it's, so it's easier to pick up. But you need to hit reset. First time you do it, it's not going to show that your controls are in Celsius, or your controls are still going to be in Celsius. They aren't going to be in Fahrenheit yet. So you have to go back into the screen, retype in the factory code, which is 3368, go to original car agreement, and then reset it to Fahrenheit, or just make sure that it's on Fahrenheit, and then reset it again. And by the second time, it'll it'll change it it's just really weird you need to reset it twice to in order for it to work so there's that the carplay or actually i use android auto i use an android so the android auto and carplay is through car link right here so this is where i get kind of annoyed uh the most it's saying waiting for a device to connect which my phone's been connected to this wirelessly plenty of times before. For some reason, it's not connecting wirelessly right now. So normally I'll reset it and it will fix the problem. Sometimes if I don't reset it and it doesn't fix the problem, then what I'll need to do is just check the settings on my phone, make sure the Bluetooth is on. Because if the Bluetooth is off, the wireless Android Auto will not work. So this is the screen that I'm getting. So what I'm going to do now is reset it and I'll show you how to do that. Just like resetting the uh, the factory car, or yeah, right there. So it's gonna pop up. It's going to disconnect me when it connects to Android Auto so I'll have to restart the video. I just wanted to let you guys know that. It 
See it's saying connecting. That's what it's supposed to say when you're wirelessly connecting. It's gonna So this is what the Android Auto looks like. It has maps. It has I use YouTube Music. You can if you use Spotify, you can use Spotify. So there's Spotify, phone, you can take phone calls. What I've noticed though is the phone calls are not the greatest. The main reason why is there's no like external mic for the unit. So if you have AC on or if you're if there's a lot of road noise, it's really hard for them to pick up on your voice. It doesn't sound very good. I actually had a call today where the person couldn't hear me on the other end. So I had to switch it to not use Bluetooth and had to take the call with my phone up to my ear, which is kind of frowned upon. But it has phone, has messages. So messages are really nice because what they'll do is if you're in Android Auto and you're driving, it'll pop up the message and it will, after it reads the message, it'll let you decide what you want to say back and then it will use voice to text to to send it to the net to the other to the person i'll show you what that what that's like so my fiance just said yeah play out loud replied james arthur babe just got done cleaning i'm with my friend right now babe remember the one i was helping last night replied yeah do you want to reply yeah okay babe I love you, babe. I got, babe, I love you, babe. Do you want to send it or change it? Change it. Change it. Okay, what's the message? Okay, babe, I love you. I got. Okay, babe, I love you. Okay, it's sent. So you can do that. You can also get directions. Directions to Hy-Vee. So normally it doesn't do that, but sometimes it does. I think it's because I was talking to you guys and using that, but it will show you the the routes that you can take and then you can hit this to Head get directions. Head North on St. Joseph Drive toward Lake Eleanor Road. So yeah that's some that's the main gripe that I have with this the wireless Android Auto sometimes doesn't work but other times it works which is really annoying so a lot of times either I reset it with that needle or I plug it in to my USB-C and it will it'll it works every time that I plug it into the USB-C but sometimes I just have problems with the Bluetooth so another thing that I noticed with this is if you look right here my outside temperature gauge doesn't work anymore I don't know if that's because of this install or if it's because of my remote start i have a drone mobile remote start inside of it so i can start it anywhere from my from my phone but yeah the outside temperature does not work anymore on my car which is really really not a big deal because i can always ask google what the temperature is outside and the drone mobile shows the temperature inside the car which is kind of more important than the temperature outside I just wanted to add three things before I go. So the best place to get this would be through AliExpress. I'll leave a link below. I got mine off of eBay. It shipped from China, AliExpress, ships from, ships from China too. It's actually cheaper on AliExpress and they provide a backup camera. Not only that, but you have three different models to choose from. I only had the three gigabyte RAM, 32 gigabyte memory option to choose from when i bought this on ebay so on aliexpress you have a four and 
uh, 64 and then you also have a 6 and 128 gigabyte option so if you're looking for a better better model you can get it there it's going to be a little bit more expensive for the better models but the for the same thing on ebay you're going to be paying less so that's that then i wanted to show you guys when you start up the device after installing it you have to go to device and hit sound so i turned it off already but you're gonna have the keypad tone on which is very very annoying so everything you hit is gonna make this beeping noise so you want to go to sound keypad tone and turn that off so there's that and one thing that i didn't mention is when you're driving at night if you have your headlights turned on it illuminates all of these buttons for you which makes everything a lot simpler it also kind of dims the screen a little bit from what i've noticed but it's not it's it's just to make nighttime driving easier so that's actually everything thank you guys for watching bye i'll leave a link link for aliexpress in the comments not in the comments in the description i'll leave the link to aliexpress in the description so thank you guys bye